welcome back to the Pontypridd High School workshop. The first consideration before any job is health and safety. For the demonstration I'm about to carry out, I'm in a controlled environment here and I'm aware of the hazards and the risks and keeping myself safe. We haven't got no vehicles or whatever passing around. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove my high vis uh, jacket for this demonstration and I'll be leaving the rest of my PP equipment on. This assessment replicates a model assignment that we put together which is called Sunny Cove Lodge. On part of the south elevation of Sunny Cove Lodge we have a damaged coin. This needs to be rebuilt so students would need to be able to rebuild the coin in a controlled assessment within a workshop area. This demonstration matches the success criteria for the assessment, the practical assessment for the WJC qualification. Ultimately, this is what you're working towards. These are the two main structures that we use to practice bricklaying. The rack first, then the coin. The reason why we do the rack and we do the rack first is it's a lot easier to start laying your beds and laying your joints and to, to adapt the technique and the hand and eye coordination to be able to gain the skill level required. So the more you practice on the rack, then you can go onto the coin. And what we need to aim to achieve for the final assessment is the coin built into the door frame. We do ask within the success criteria that the door frame is tied in or built into the, to the new coin that the students need to build. For this we just use a bit of 4 by 2 timber with a 2 by one strap. A wall connector. Wall connectors can be fitted to any background whether they're screwed, drilled or fixed in to the timber door frame. Once these wall connectors are fixed to the timber, the angle brackets slide in to the connector and you bring it down and every course that you build gets connected. Before we start work, it's very important we maintain a safe working area and we make sure that we have all the materials required for the task. We need to make, make sure that the floor is level before you start. The next. the next stage is to start building the coin. If we take a straight edge, make sure that the door frame is nice and square and our straight edge is running parallel to the door frame. It's always handy to have a little bit of chalk and chalk the line out first. Then, for this coin, we need three, come out three full bricks from the door frame. So we place a brick there, strike a line, allow 10 millimeter for a joint. Then put another brick, 10 millimeter for a joint. And then your final brick. What we do then, we know we three bricks out because there's three, there was three bricks damaged on the coin on Sunny Cove Lodge. Then we use a square which goes against the straight edge. So you know that's, that's the end of your wall, that's your three full bricks coming out. Strike the line. This is one we made ourselves out of timber. You can also buy them ready made. We need three and a half bricks coming out on the south elevation. So we actually need to extend the line out further. So this coin, that's the most important part, that's your plumbing point. That needs to be completely square. You've got your 90 degree angle. So that point there is the most important. And that's where you start from. You always start from that coin because that's where you've got the most plumbing points. Right, now we start to lay 
we work from this coin back into the door frame. Roll the mortar, drop and drag. Maintaining your line, your chalk line, so you can still see your chalk line. What you do then, you run your trowel along the centre, so that you'll be able to spread your mortar when you lay your bricks. Important part, a little tip, just make sure when you pick up every brick, your thumb is on the face of the brick, because that's what's important. We go down out of the corner, lining up with the chalk line, and we need to maintain a 10 millimeter bed. 10 millimeters for the bed and 10 millimeters for the joint. Next brick, thumb on the face. Two ways of perping a brick. When you lift it, small amount, flick, put it on a slight angle, center. There, that's one way. Maintain the full brick. Same again, flick, put it down and just flatten and strike the way. Squeeze the brick up, allowing 10 millimetres again. Clear up the excess from around the back of the wall as you're building. This could become the perp then for your next joint. There's your three bricks out. Now we need to level, placing the level across the bricks. We need to make sure this is perfectly level. Then we need to line it across the front of the frame. So we make sure it's running parallel off our door frame and then we're ready for our return where we go the other way. Then we have three grips coming out this way. Drop and drag across the centre. The, when you're using the bricks is to make sure there's no damaged face on any of the brick. For the distinction, to gain the distinction on this, the bricks have to be perfect. Joints need to be 10 millimetres, perps need to be 10 millimetres and no damage to any of the face on the bricks. Loop again, centre. Squeeze him up, ensuring you're 10 millimetres. Excess, that comes the next book. Squeeze him up. Ten millimeters. that coin right the way through. Run along the chalk line, 
making sure it's nice and square. By using the square that you made, just drop it in behind the back of the bricks and you can see then that that corner is 90 degrees. This is the first course. Now I will come on to the second course. This takes some time and quite a lot of training before you can actually get to this stage. So you need to practice the technique well in advance of this controlled assessment. Second course, make sure we come from this coin. Remember what I said earlier that this is the most important part? So that's where we come from. So roll it out. Following a lot of practice with this, you'll be able to gauge with the eye what 10 millimeter looks like. So we start off on the coin on the corner. Remember 10 millimeters so you don't tap the brick down too much otherwise you're going to end up less than 10 millimeters. So when we start off with this brick because it's the first brick on the corner, we level this one in first. I'm judging my eye so I know that that is 10 millimeters. And what we need to do then is plumb, although we got that level, we need to plumb the both sides and plumb is too vertical. If you see there where the bubble was when it was level on a horizontal face, we now plumb it up and making sure that the bubble is in between the two lines vertically as well. So that's on the one side there, you do it on the other side here, making sure that the bubble is in the centre. Now we know that brick is perfect. one end to the other, making sure that the bubble is in the centre. Then we plumb this end of the wall, ensuring that the bubble is in the centre. Then we run the line across the two points. So we've got a plumbing point there, plumbing point there, plumbing point there. Then we go over to the other side, running back from the corner, into the door frame, drop and drag, make sure you spread your mortar. Go right up to the coin. Now we go in the other way, we'll be perping the back end of the brick. So the same thing, down on the 45, squeeze the centre, take the excess off both sides, make sure you've got a nice full joint. Squeeze him up with the eye again, 10 millimetres. Now, as you can see, there is a shorter gap there which maintains this end of the, of the brick. So we'll have to cut the brick to make sure that we form the bond. This is called stretcher bond, where we have the centre of the joint above in the centre of the brick below. Each one of these perp joints are coming in on half 
way along the brick. That's how you form your bond. So I level them in again. Level them in. Now instead of plumbing down on this end, I can just line it through with the frame because we come in parallel of that timber frame. To maintain the bond, we need a half brick to go up the side of the door frame. So I've just cut this brick. Uh, I will take you on and show you how to cut the brick later. This is my half brick to maintain the bond. So that's your first and second course. Now with this bond, the first course becomes your third course and your second course becomes your fourth course. You start it from this corner again, so this first course becomes a third course. So we just copy in of what we got underneath. And then you just keep going until you reach the top. That's the second course.
on both sides to ensure that it's plumb. Just a little check to make sure. Line him through, make sure he's lined up. We know this column is plumb. We know we don't need another tip. Make sure that these are all in line. There may be one or two just need tapping slightly, but in the main, it's perfect all the way down there in line with, with the level. And then if you check, the square again, this is important, that the wall is square all the way up. Okay. The wall is square, so that wall is 290 degrees of, as we would have built into the door frame using this system. We didn't do a year on this one. I maintained a clean working area all the way through. So that's your structure, that's your coin, which replicates the south elevation on Sunny Cove Lodge. This is a finished item, but we need to go into the decorative finish just to put the finishing touches on it before it's marked for an assessment. There's quite a few types of, of joint and finishing uh, joints that you can actually use on these walls. Basically, it's a decorative finish plus to, to take the water away. We have a half round jointer, as you can see there, which is most commonly known as the bucket handle, which gives a bucket handle joint. And there's a raked out recess joint, which you use with this wheel jointer. So these are the two main common types of jointing that's used. Right, I'm going to use the recessed jointer on this side, the wheel jointer, which goes up and down the joint. Make sure that the nail is set to the correct depth. You don't want a depth of 10 millimetres on this going back, because it's just too far back. So we're looking at about 5 millimetres set back in. And then the nail, we take out the excess mortar on the wheels. It just helps to, to wheel it up and down the face of the brick. What you've got to be careful of, like a lot of this now is still a little bit wet. Ideally, it'd be better to leave this for an hour or so before you actually joint it. Because as I'm doing it there now, you're gonna get something that will go on the face and that's something we don't wanna do. So I'll go onto the, the bucket handle joint, half round on this side, and then I'll do a few joints just to show you, and then we'll come back in the end, once I've let this dry, so you can see where the finished article needs to be. You'd use Brush. I'm not going to put this on there now because obviously it'll smudge because it's still a little bit wet. Either run a little white paintbrush over or a soft brush to finish it off. This is the finished assessment. As you can see, it's been pointed. I've had a little bit of time, as I said earlier, where it dried out a little bit and I was able to brush it using a little uh, paintbrush or a large paintbrush. I've done the half round jointing on this face and I did the, the recessed jointing on this face, just so you can see the difference. To gain a distinction, it would have to be absolutely perfect. 10 millimetres, all the jointing needs to be perfect. Uh, the face of the brickwork needs to be kept clean at all times. If it was slightly out the plumb, slightly out the level, the joints were deviating slightly, obviously we'd be going down then to a lower grade, maybe a pass, uh, a, sorry, a merit or even a pass, dependent on you know, the, the finished structure once the assessor marks it. Don't rush this assignment. It's a controlled assessment where you'll have six hours. But I'll be right to the end after plenty of training with you a tutor.
you will have plenty of practice, so keep practicing um, before you actually do the final assessment. This is one of the nine occupations, so if you are doing bricklaying, this is the way uh, that we would expect uh, for the success criteria to be met. These resources are here to help you on your journey. Good luck.